Welcome back to Web Development with AngularJS and Bootstrap. In the last section, we looked at getting and storing input from users. In this section, we'll have a look at form validation with respect to submitting forms. In this video, we'll start by looking at conditionally disabling submit forms. First, let's look at what options Bootstrap has for displaying and disabling buttons. If we open up the Bootstrap docs, we can see that all we have to do to prevent the user from clicking on the button is to add a disabled attribute. There's nothing new here from standard HTML, and we can see that Bootstrap has added some styling to the button to visually represent this change. Next, let's have a look at AngularJS. If we open up the docs page about the ng disable directive, There's a description about why we couldn't just use the curly braces and the attribute value to change the disabled value of the button. So we now know that we'll have to use ng disabled instead of disabled to change the disabled state dynamically. You might have noticed that there may now be an issue with Bootstrap's disabled button state. But if we look closely at the description, we can see that AngularJS is reading the value inside its attribute as if it were a scope variable and adding or removing the disabled attribute as needed. First, let's switch back over to our code editor and set up a button that we can disable and enable via a scope variable. Enter this into your HTML view in the form. Don't forget those bootstrap button classes. As we can see here, this button is actually not disabled. This is due to the way ng disabled works. Basically everything in the ng disabled attribute is treated as a boolean variable on the scope. The evaluation of the attribute automatically assumes that all variable names are variable on the scope. So in this case, as we haven't defined the disabled variable, it evaluates to false as undefined is equivalent to false in JavaScript. If we were to write up this logic as a JavaScript function, it would look something like this. Let's go ahead and add in the proper disable boolean. Now that we have our scoped variables, let's have a look at how our page is rendering. And as we can see, the test button is now disabled. The final step now is to change this button so that it is only enabled when the form is valid. Let's do that now. So we want the button to be disabled when the form is invalid or it hasn't been edited, i.e. pristine. And as you remember, we can put a Boolean expression in. So we're going to do this. And if we enter in some data, once both fields are valid, our button is now not disabled. We have successfully disabled the button. We are now on our way to making this form submit only valid data. In the next video, we are going to have a closer look at the AngularJS ng form and ng submit directives, which help us with actually submitting data from the form.